Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to today's important lesson about the Revolutionary War. We are in lesson nine of our unit on how America gained its freedom. And today we're going to focus on the challenges involved in that fight for freedom. At this point, the Declaration of Independence has been written and proclaimed on July 4th, 1776. And the newly formed United States of America is going to have to fight a war with the British Empire in order to actually gain that independence. So today we are going to look at the strengths and weaknesses of the American side and the British side going into what we call the Revolutionary War or the War for American Independence. So we are going to create quadrants on your notes with a section for a summary at the bottom and we're going to have two quadrants for the strengths of each side and two quadrants for the weaknesses of each side and we're going to start with the strengths and we're going to start with the american strengths so one of the major strengths the american side had is those people who supported the American Revolution, the Patriots, were very, very, very committed to the cause. So much so that they were literally willing to give their lives, their fortunes, and their sacred honor, just like it says at the end of the Declaration of Independence. Everybody was all in for the American Revolution if they were on the Patriot side, and that was definitely an American strength. Americans were fighting for and defending their own home soil. If you're defending your own land, you're going to fight with a lot more passion than you are if you're across the ocean from your home and you're trying to take somebody else's land. Uh, George Washington was an extremely gifted and popular leader. Uh, at this point, he had served for the British in the French Indian War, gained a lot of military experience. Uh, he became a delegate from Virginia to the Continental Congress, and the Continental Congress elected him to be the commanding general of the newly formed Continental Army. And he was a very good strategist, and he had uh, the respect of his soldiers, very much so. And it just so happened that we had allies in Europe who really wanted to see us become independent and beat the British. And one of those allies just happened to be France. And why might that be? Maybe the fact that France lost the French and Indian War and was still bitter about that and would have found it extremely satisfying to have the 13 colonies become a free and independent nation so uh, they can stick it to the British. Entirely possible. And I'm going to tell you right now, without French help, we would not have become an independent country. More on that later. Obviously, the British were the mightiest empire on the face of the earth, and they had some strengths as well. Uh, one of the strengths was simply numbers. They had 50,000 professionally trained troops, and on top of that, they paid 30,000 German mercenaries uh, to support them and also do their dirty work. So that's a total of 80,000 soldiers available to fight and quash the American Revolution. That's a, that was a lot. Uh, there were loyalists in the United States. In fact, there were more loyalists than there were patriots, if you can believe it. Um, that is not often known. I think it was two to one. Uh, there was only one in three uh, citizens of the 13 colonies or states that actually did support the revolutionary cause, but those who did were extremely passionate. Um, the British had loyalists who actually wanted them to be successful, and those loyalists sometimes helped them out. Uh, the British Army was extremely professional and experienced, and especially when it came to large-scale battles uh, that required a lot of movements and strategy and organization and experience, the British soldiers hands down had what it took um, 
when facing off against American forces. And at this point, I'm calling them American forces because they're no longer the colonies. They've declared themselves the United States of America. I'm going to refer to it as the American side or the United States side. And uh, so we're, we're beyond the colonial era at this point. And finally, the British had lots of supplies and the, the ability and money to deliver them. Uh, and even though they had to ship their supplies across the ocean, they had the resources and they had the ability to do it. They may have had to go into more debt to do it, but they made that choice and they were actually able to do that because you know, they went into debt after the French Indian War. It's not like the Revolutionary War wasn't going to incur more debt, but they were willing to do it to keep their colonies. So as you can see, both sides did have advantages. Um, you could debate which side had more advantages. Obviously, we know we are an independent country, but like looking at it going in, ask yourself, which side do you think would have or should have prevailed? We could even talk about that in class. But right now, I'm going to go on to the next slide. And so on this slide, we are going to focus on what the weaknesses, or another way of putting that is, what were the challenges for each side in the Revolutionary War. And we'll start on the American side, and some of these are obvious, and some of these you may not have thought of, so let's just go through them. The first challenge for the American side was that General Washington never had more than 20,000 troops at any given time. So if you look at those British totals where they had 50,000 regular troops and plus the 30,000 mercenaries, that's 80,000 troops. So that's a four to one advantage against the Continental Army. Uh, anytime you have a four to one advantage, you've got a pretty serious advantage. And also, you know, General Washington had no way to keep his troops in line. They volunteered for periods of six months and a lot of them after six months just bailed. They did not stick around. So keeping his army cohesive was a challenge for General George Washington. Uh, the American volunteers were extremely poorly trained and they would often turn and run. Because Washington was constantly having to replace people and train them up again, the level of experience they had was low. And so when confronted with a serious challenge, oftentimes they would cut and run. Not all of them, but many of them did. And that made, obviously, winning a battle difficult, much less keeping the army together. Uh, the Continental Army was also chronically undersupplied. The British were able to supply their army very easily. They were the mightiest army on the face of the earth. Uh, the American army, it was difficult to find supplies, and it was difficult to pay for those supplies. And in fact, many volunteers to the Continental Army actually bailed because of the supply issue. Uh, like, if I'm going to fight for you, at least give me supplies. Couldn't even do that. So that made retaining uh, members of the Continental Army very difficult. And finally, I've already alluded to this somewhat, the Continental Congress did not have enough money to supply the volunteers. Um, you might have remembered that, that little clip from John Adams, the movie, when uh, they were writing the Olive Branch petition at the beginning of that clip, they were talking about there's no money to pay for supplies. It would be lovely to give them a salary. It would be lovely to pay for supplies. We actually don't have any cash because we don't have any taxing authority. In fact, we haven't even really created a government structure to even justify our existence. So um, they were basically trying to build the plane while they were flying it. And in some cases, that was pretty ugly. So, uh, The British, despite being the mightiest empire on the face of the earth, did have some weaknesses. First of all, distance. Britain had to send soldiers across the ocean two and a half months far from home. And that made supplying their troops slow and costly. So even though they had the ability to do it, it cost a lot of money and it took a lot of time. And back home in Britain, convincing the public that fighting a war to keep the colonies in the fold uh, 
was a tough sell. They had already fought the French and Indian War. You know, many soldiers died in that war. Now all of a sudden we're going to fight another war to keep the colonies in line when they don't even want to be in line. So we're literally forcing our colonies against their will to remain part of the British Empire. Many people back in the British Isles were like, you know, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not totally sold on that. Not that it mattered. It's not like the king needed a vote of confidence from the people, but it did make things a little testy back in the Isles. Uh, and the parliament was elected by a small portion of the British population, uh, and the parliament had to answer to that small portion of the British population. At this point in time, not all of the citizens of the British Isles had the vote to choose their parliament. So it was more of the elitists, people with money and power, that were able to choose the parliament. Um, the British were fighting far from home, and had less motivation to win. Uh, just as the Americans had a lot of motivation to win because they were fighting for their own home soil, the British were fighting pretty far away from home. And so many of them were like, you know, I could take it or leave it, honestly. I mean, the government's telling me to be here. I'm not totally into it. And so that was definitely an issue. And finally, um, we were fortunate to have General George Washington. The British didn't choose the best military leaders, just to be straight up. They, they had some, some pretty weak and poorly, uh, weak military leaders who made poor decisions. Uh, and as a result of that, uh, the Americans were able to take advantage, which we will learn further down the road. So ladies and gentlemen, you should have four quadrants filled out at this point. American strengths, British strengths, American weaknesses, British weaknesses. If you were in high school, or maybe even if you're in eighth grade, I could actually give you an essay prompt. A prompt is basically a complex series of questions that you should be able to answer in writing an essay. And if I were to give you an essay prompt for what we've just learned, it would sound something like this. Compare and contrast the strengths and weaknesses of the United States and the British sides in the Revolutionary War. What advantages did each side have? What weaknesses challenged each side? In your opinion, what were the most important differences between the two sides? I might ask you to answer something like that on the test. And if not, that might be something you would have to think about if you were in high school because you will be asked questions like that all the time. Um, but right now, I'm probably going to ask you to write a summary in class, but the YouTube portion of this lesson is over. So this is Mr. Blumendahl once again signing off on the Waldo Middle School Social Studies YouTube Network.